What's going on, everyone? My name is Scooter Lithid, and later tonight I will be helping some new players learn how to play D&D with uh, character creation, and I thought this would be a great time to do a video about Session Zero. So, se uh, Session Zero, laying the foundation before you guys even roll a one-shot character creation stuff. So, I'm going to go over uh, five different tips or things to bring up during your Zero session. So the first thing that I like to ask my players is if they have had any past experience to kind of get to know maybe this guy has played 3.5 for 10, 15 years. Maybe this guy has never touched uh, a D20 in his life. Maybe this guy has played some Pathfinder or some 4E. And you kind of get a feel of the different players' experiences and the different backgrounds that they came from. So that is just something that I like to know as a DM who my more experienced players are that are coming to the table to play this uh, this campaign or the session that I'm going to be ma uh, making for them. Another thing that you really want to bring up is what you allow in terms of races and classes. Are they going to be only 5e core player's handbook? The only things in there are, is it going to be the expansions of 5e? Uh, are you going to allow some homebrew classes, some uh, different types of classes that are not in any modules or rule books. That's something that you're gonna want to address. So instead of assuming that everyone's just going to pick uh, some 5e, you know, dwarf cleric, and they come to the table with this uh, custom homebrew uh, owlbear witch doctor class that you have never seen before in your life and you have no idea its strengths, weaknesses, or what it does. So it's good to be upfront with uh, what you expect from them for races and classes before they start actually spending the time to write their character and their background and their story and the flaws and stuff like that. So you're not wasting anyone's time and the players get an idea from you of, you know, what you expect. Also, you need to be upfront with the alignment. If you're restricting evil classes, if you don't really want anyone to be lawful evil or anything with the word evil in it, if you're kind of wanting everyone to be kind of either neutral or good, you should also be upfront with that. So you don't have chaotic good or true lawful characters mixed in with these lawful evil characters and then you as the DM are trying to have to figure out you know how these alignments would clash and not clash once they're in the party and through certain encounters. Another big thing that you want to tell your players is what kind of style of DMing that you do. More of a hack and slash go in the dungeon and kill stuff? Are you more of a narrative role-playing type that doesn't really even touch a battle map but it's all through the theater of the mind? Use miniatures heavily with maps and trees and scenery and different props and stuff that you uh, bought from different hobby stores. It's good to let your players know kind of what they're diving into. First off, that lets them figure out kind of where, what they want their background to be for their uh, character. And also it gives them an idea of the setting that their uh, characters are about to get thrown into. So let the players know what your style of DMing is and uh, what is comfortable for you uh, DMing. How long is this going to last? Let's tell your players... How long this session or this campaign is going to last. If you should say, well, this should be from level one to five is roughly how long this should, uh, this is going to be. Is it going to be a couple months, a couple, a couple years even, maybe just a couple weeks. It's good to let the players uh, know up front how long roughly uh, the session might be. And you as the DM might have no idea. You might be coming up with, uh, coming up with it all on your own and you honestly don't really have a rough idea. Last thing is house rules. Do you let the dice play as it lies if it drops on the floor? Do they have to roll it through a dice tower? Do they have to leave it uh, rolling on the book that it can't touch the table? Oddly enough, there are a lot of DMs that have different opinions of, of how the different dice should go. Also, players have their own preferences of how they like to roll their dice. Do they like to roll it on the book and if it drops on the table, they get to re-roll it? That's something you want to discuss of uh, dice preference and how uh, some players roll it. Like I have a player that just rolls on his clipboard and if it falls off, then he re-rolls it, which I'm fine with that because that's just his preference of how he wants to roll his dice. You also want to address absences or people being late and how you're going to implement that in your session. If you have a couple people say, you know, well, I have a wedding to go to or I'm going on vacation here in about three, four weeks, that's something that you as the DM should know and also the player should know so you can plan for that. So, like I said, session zero is all about building the foundation and just being up front, getting to know the players, getting to know the characters, writing the backstory and letting them know from the DM, you know, this is what I expect. This is kind of uh, my style of DMing. And if they don't like that, which some of them might not, I mean, 
They can either stay and tough it out, and maybe they'll love it and enjoy it, or they're going to have to find a new party. Essentially what Session Zero is, is just getting, uh, brainstorming, collaborating, uh, getting everything ready to go. So when you do your first session or your first one shot with them, everyone has their characters written, background, their story. They know what they're getting into, what kind of environment they're getting into, and what kind of style they're going to be playing through. If you guys have any other questions, uh, just let me know. You can ask me directly on here on YouTube or on Twitter or on Facebook. I'm always on my phone talking to people replying, retweeting, and stuff like that. So it's a really quick and easy way to get a hold of me. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. That would be fantastic. That's really about it for today. So you guys have a good day, a great night, wherever you are, and I will see you guys later.